Okay, so Graziano restarted his. His session and right now he's back again and let's see if it works right now. Yeah, a new life. Can you hear me now? We can hear you very good. Okay, Great. sorry for all this technical problem. No problem. <laughs> yes, okay, I'm here now. Okay, good morning everybody once again. <clears throat> My name is Graziano Eligir and uh, I work at Innovab, which is a multi-sector uh, research center located in Milano. <clears throat> Actually, the topic of uh, today, uh, recyclability and compostability, is one of the major focus uh, of uh, our paper division. As a, as a matter of fact, we have been working on uh, these issues uh, for more than 15 years now. We started from research uh, probably more than 15 years ago, and now we are doing a lot of services uh, uh, for companies within, uh, uh, within this field. But let's, let's start with uh, our presentation. Okay, here it is. Uh, I think it's been clear uh, for, for everybody that uh, the replacement of conventional plastic with the other material uh, is a critical factor for several, uh, uh, for several brands, for several companies. And uh, this uh, major packaging trend is definitely driven by uh, some uh, uh, significant factor. Among that, uh, uh, significant change in consumer behavior, uh, a greater attention uh, from the company perspective uh, uh, regarding sustainability. You have heard the previous speaker talking about uh, corporate social responsibility, which is becoming uh, more and more relevant within, uh, within at least large, uh, large enterprises. But uh, last uh, and definitely not least, uh, <clears throat> the recent publication of some uh, European directives and I think particularly about uh, the circular economy package and uh, the single-use uh, uh, plastic directive which uh, gave uh, a, a significant uh, uh, push to all these, uh, uh, these trends. Uh, when, uh, in this context, uh, actually, paper is often seen as one of the most uh, eco-friendly alternative to, uh, to conventional plastic. But uh, nonetheless, we have to keep in mind that the paper itself as a material is a porous material and shows uh, uh, low barrier property, particularly respect to gases, uh, moisture and uh, grease food stuff. Uh, however, we uh, think that the combination between paper and bioplastic might definitely be a sustainable solution because uh, uh, these materials uh, uh, have some complementary properties. Uh, they can be obtained from uh, renewable sources uh, and they can be recyclable or compostable depending uh, <coughs> uh, on the application that uh, it's been uh, developed. Of course, uh, uh, this is a sustainable solution as long as uh, it complies with the circular e economy concept. And this is something that uh, I will try to, <clears throat> uh, to focus during my presentation and hopefully you will get some uh, better idea about what we mean comply with the circular economy in practice. When we look at uh, recycling options uh, we have for packaging, we have uh, uh, two options. One is material recycling and the other one is organic recycling, better known as uh, compostability. Nowadays, uh, compostability is a clear market trend, is a word uh, uh, probably more, even more biodegradability than compostability, uh, is a word that is very well perceived by consumer uh, and uh, it's uh, even difficult sometimes to uh, make the, the consumer uh, be aware about the difference uh, between biodegradability and compostability. But this is definitely uh, a clear market trend well perceived by consumer. 
just to give you an idea, in our laboratory, we get a lot of requests for compostability of nonsense uh, products like, uh, you know, textile material, boots, I mean, materials and products that are uh, meant to be durable, but, uh, you know, people uh, just for market reason, they want to achieve the, uh, the compostability certification. But uh, even when we limit the perspective to uh, packaging, uh, uh, I think uh, when we refer to paper-based packaging process, we have to keep in mind uh, uh, and at least to think about uh, if biodegradability and compostability, uh, it is always the best choice when we design the products, uh, no matter the fact that the consumer I li uh, like uh, uh, the words uh, and uh, the meaning uh, of, uh, uh, of these words. Uh, besides uh, <clears throat> not only eco-design, but also <clears throat> we need to understand uh, what are the main issues uh, in uh, the different uh, waste management uh, uh, routes. <clears throat> so, uh, when we refer to different uh, recycling routes, uh, eco-design is uh, definitely a critical factor for, for circular economy. <clears throat> uh, in fact, the functionality and attractive design often conflicts with the best possible recyclability behavior uh, of, the, of the products. Therefore, in order to, uh, to, make, uh, to, uh, to make a proper eco-design, we need to have a very good knowledge of the materials, not only the material, but also the additive. We need to understand uh, uh, the properties of the material, <clears throat> and we need to understand the behavior of the additives during uh, the recyclability uh, stream that we choose. Uh, and uh, the choice of material and additives must uh, be function of the recycling routes that we want to uh, have for uh, for the process that we uh, that is under developing. <clears throat> In order to have a, a general picture of uh, uh, the waste management, we need to understand also the situation of uh, the recycling <coughs> uh, routes that we choose. Uh, when we look at the paper recycling in Europe, we have to understand that, that right now, paper for recycling <coughs> is the most important raw material of the paper industry in, in Europe. And as a matter of fact, uh, not only in Europe, but uh, also so globally. When we refer to packaging, uh, paper is the most recycled material in Europe and uh, <clears throat> at the European level we have some important target. <clears throat> Uh, the first target, it is actually an industry voluntary target that was set a few years ago uh, for all paper products, not only uh, paper-based packaging. This target uh, was set at 74% by the industry by 2020, uh, whereas for uh, packaging, uh, the targets are 75% by 2025 and 85% by 2030, uh, by, uh, by 2030. Uh, if you look at the graph that is uh, present in this slide, you see that uh, uh, paper for recycling uh, rate uh, was uh, constantly increased constantly starting from the 90s, and uh, it's now in 2019 up to 72%. So not yet at the target that was set by the paper industry, but, uh, but almost there. Uh, why it is so difficult to reach this target? It is so difficult because uh, for different reasons, actually. Uh, first of all, uh, because actually too much uh, potential recycled paper is still lost in residual waste. But that's not the only reason. The other reason is that uh, uh, the most we increase uh, the recycling rate, the most we have to recycle also uh, those products that are difficult to recycle. And this poses, of course, uh, some constraints and some, uh, um, and some problems uh, for the recycling process. 
Nevertheless, uh, especially if we want to uh, get uh, by 2030 uh, up to this 85% for packaging, uh, we have to, to understand that uh, we need to, to recycle also those products that are not so easy to recycle. And actually one of the issues is to maintain also the high quality uh, of the fiber that uh, shall be maintained in the cycle and uh, uh, also uh, uh, this would be an both an economical and uh, an environmental advantage because uh, uh, because uh, the more we recycle, uh, the more we keep uh, the fiber loop, and it means that we keep uh, the material and we recycle the material many times in the loop, and this is an environmental advantage in comparison also uh, with respect to composting, because when we, uh, although composting is an important route, uh, uh, every time we send uh, uh, paper to composting plants, uh, it means that we cannot uh, recycle the fiber uh, in uh, additional loops uh, uh, in the paper industry and, and also uh, uh, as an advantage for, for the environment. So uh, modern packaging uh, is, the, is a really multitask. Uh, modern packaging uh, must protect from uh, contacts, dust, moisture, damage, microorganisms, almost everything. And that's the reason why uh, the complexity of paper packaging is increasing uh, and is increasing to meet uh, market demands, especially regarding barrier properties. Thus, competing with uh, plastic on one side, but it's not only a matter of competing now, that was a matter a few years ago, but now it's a matter of replacing the plastic that is unwanted uh, in, in, from many perspectives. Uh, food content packaging, uh, uh, due to the uh, barrier, the, due to the requirement for high barrier properties, is often made of uh, multi-materials and uh, is often made uh, of combination with the plastic or bioplastic, or also made by uh, dispersion by barrier coating. Uh, we have to understand that due to the fact that, that virgin fibers are uh, often used uh, for food contact uh, products, uh, uh, this means that often uh, very good uh, high quality virgin fibers are hidden uh, behind this plastic layer. And uh, if we do not use this multi-material, we lose uh, virgin fiber that actually uh, also essential for the uh, for the uh, paper loop because uh, uh, in order to uh, keep the properties of the cellulosic fiber uh, many scientific paper shows that uh, we needed to have a balance between virgin fiber and uh, recycled fiber and this balance uh, is uh, uh, in uh, general uh, meaning set at 80% recycled and 20% virgin fiber. So whenever we have a virgin fibers, uh, it's very useful to recover those fiber, uh, no matter they are present in, uh, uh, in normal paper or in, uh, in uh, multi-layers, uh, multi-materials paper. But uh, how can uh, packaging be optimally Hi, Gratiana, we lost you for a second. There seems to be some sort of... Um... Hello. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 we lost you for a second. Can you start again from... from uh, to talk yeah, about... Yeah, from the previous slide, so... Yeah, there are some problems because I cannot move the slide. Okay. Uh, okay, now now I did it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I was saying how can packaging be optimally designed for high quality recycling? There are some general criteria that uh, I would like to point out uh, for a good paper packaging recyclability. Well, first of all, we need uh, 
to have the lowest amount of non-paper components because non-paper components anyway generates some uh, waste during the uh, during the paper recycling uh, process. <clears throat> uh, secondly, we need to have good repalpability because good repalpability it means that we are able to disintegrate easily in water the products into fiber elements uh, does uh, <clears throat> Uh, utilizing low energy <clears throat> and uh, uh, the third uh, element is that we need to have good adhesive removability <clears throat> because because if we have adhesive in the process uh, we get into the risk of having uh, uh, deposits uh, uh, during the paper recycling process and these deposits uh, can produce uh, Paper machine stops and also break uh, uh, breaks in the in the paper in, in the paper uh, formation. Uh, also, uh, if we have a good adhesive and mechanical removability, it means that we can use less energy and less chemicals uh, that can be used to uh, somehow to uh, to help the process uh, when they are uh, when they are present. <clears throat> uh, this is true also for uh, paper bioplastic multimaterial. And I'm sorry, but okay. Uh, and uh, when uh, we refer to uh, paper multimaterial, uh, we have to keep in mind that these products are predominant predominantly made of uh, paper. Uh, common laminate composition can range from 95% paper uh, and 5% of uh, plastic up to 70% paper to 30% plastic for those products that uh, uh, require very high barrier, uh, such as, for example, li liquid beverage cartoon uh, for uh, longer shelf life. But also in uh, uh, dispersion barrier coating, uh, normally the uh, the range of bioplastic is normally not more than than 10 percent so we have to do with the material that is predominantly made of uh, paper and makes sense uh, to recycle these products within the paper stream uh, Generally speaking, uh, some bioplastic behave very similarly to conventional plastic. This is the case, for example, of bio-based polyethylene. Bio-based polyethylene is basically the same polymer uh, than uh, than the traditional polyethylene and the behave in the paper recycling process it is exactly the same uh, nevertheless not all bioplastic are uh, well known and sometimes you can we can get in some issue like uh, <clears throat> uh, fragmentation or uh, adhesive for lamination that are different than the one that are normally used for tradi for traditional uh, uh, plastic lamination and also also in some instances, we have also uh, an excessive uh, solubilization of the uh, of the barrier in in the process water. <clears throat> Uh, in uh, this uh, uh, slide, you see some uh, example, <clears throat> for example, of uh, the coarse rejects that can be obtained uh, during the paper recycling process. <clears throat> uh, and uh, you see at the top of the, at the top of the slides. Uh, <clears throat> some uh, uh, coarse rejects uh, uh, from uh, extruded PA, uh, extruded polyethylene, sorry. And uh, you see in, the, in, the, in this picture that the polymer, the, the, the film uh, is, uh, is not fragmented at all, is well, very well separated from the fiber. Instead, at the bottom, you see some example of, uh, uh, in, the, in the left side, some metallized PET film, <coughs> uh, where you see some uh, from fragmentation, not excessive, and uh, you see on the right side here, uh, some bioplastic film that show it instead uh, uh, some uh, some excessive fragmentation. I mean, this is just an example. It doesn't mean that all bioplastic behaved like this, but this is an example of unwanted fragmentation uh, when we uh, use bioplastic. <clears throat> so this is something that uh, uh, must be uh, understand, must be known, and uh, uh, from... Um, from the company perspective that develop these uh, these products uh, 
actually uh, we can give some uh, with respect to the design for uh, paper packaging uh, recycling we can give some general recommendation uh, for example regarding non-paper components either they are plastic or bioplastic laminates uh, uh, we would like ideally that the barrier <coughs> should be very easy to be separated from fibers either when this is done mechanically during the paper recycling process and also or also manually by uh, consumer uh, when it's possible to separate the barrier uh, by the consumer is normally uh, very easy also to uh, to separate also in uh, during the, the paper recycling also, the plastic layers should not disintegrate or break into small pieces during the paper recycling process because, as I highlighted in the previous slide, then this is more difficult to be uh, to separate. Uh, also, double coating should be avoided. Uh, double, for double coating, I mean when the coating is done on the front and on the back of the uh, of the products, and this is not uh, recommended because uh, when we have a double coating, uh, uh, the water uh, intake is more difficult in the products, and uh, uh, a more difficult water intake uh, it means that uh, it's more difficult to disintegrate the process. Uh, uh, during the uh, during the repulping of the uh, of the products, with respect to the to the adhesive, instead, uh, uh, it's not so so easy to give some general recommendation, but for sure they have to be applied in a way that they can be easily uh, mechanically removed uh, in the condition of the standard paper recycling process and actually this is important not only for standard recycling process but also for uh, those uh, uh, meals that use uh, uh, multi-material uh, very difficult multi-material because addition is really uh, a, a an issue for all the different standard recycling process that, that we have uh, that we have in Europe. Also for others, it is important to avoid the fragmentation. Uh, and uh, one general recommendation is that we have to uh, avoid the soft adhesive and particularly self self-adhesive labels, uh, the pressure sensitive adhesive that are definitely detrimental in the process because they are very small, they are very, uh, very tacky and they really get uh, a lot of trouble during the recycling process. Uh, concerning adhesive removability, uh, in this slide probably you can understand better why they should not break into small pieces. Uh, the issue is that uh, these tacky particles, when uh, uh, they disintegrate uh, uh, in the in the first step of the recycle uh, line, uh, they are present in the recycled pulp slurry, and normally they are removed uh, by a slotted screen. Uh, during the recycling, we have different size of this screen, but the smallest one are about are about 150 microns and if, if these adhesive are smaller they end up in uh, in uh, getting into the accept uh, uh, with the fibers and in the end uh, they create a prob problem in during paper sheet formation either during the process and also uh, for the quality of the of the final products so uh, Hope you understood more uh, about what are the issue. Uh, what can we say about the recyclability of uh, this multi-material? <clears throat> uh, well, first of all, uh, I have to highlight, I have to point out that uh, uh, technically uh, all these products are recyclable. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not only a matter of uh, uh, technological constraint. Uh, the real problem is that the standard paper recycling mill, they can stand up only a certain amount of multi-material. And uh, the reason why uh, they can stand up only a certain amount is because uh, uh, 
uh, they disintegrate slowly, some of them, and uh, this is uh, a technological problem, but uh, uh, the major problem is probably an economical factor because uh, uh, it, they generate a higher amount of waste that the standard paper recycling mill uh, cannot handle. Uh, Take in mind uh, that uh, when you have uh, a waste reject that is uh, predominantly made of uh, um, different kinds of plastic, uh, it's very difficult to recycle because you have many different type of polymers. <clears throat> and, and therefore, uh, depending on the infrastructure that are, that are available, available, you can only thermovalorize these waste rejects or you, in the end, you have to send it out uh, 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 to landfill uh, or, or uh, at the moment I think this is the uh, what is done <clears throat> uh, for example in Italy uh, uh, we have the issue that uh, uh, the paper recycling mill cannot uh, cannot thermovalorize uh, uh, these waste rejects and uh, therefore we need to to limit uh, the uh, the this kind of projects within the normal recycling stream. Uh, in other countries, like in Germany, thermovalorization is done more uh, easier, and uh, and that's important for the paper mills because they can recover the energy for uh, for the process. But we also have a specialized paper recycling mill that can handle these projects in a, in a better way. <clears throat> they apply different. Uh, uh, different conditions, so they have uh, higher efficiency and they can get uh, uh, waste rejects that are more uh, under control. Uh, for example, if you recycle uh, uh, only Tetra Pak, for example, you basically have only one kind of uh, of plastic uh, uh, in in the waste rejet, uh, which is mostly polyethylene, and you can also, uh, uh, let's say, recover this plastic and further recycle this plastic. Uh, the issue, of course, is that there are uh, additional uh, <clears throat> uh, additional products that are entering this stream and we need to find a solution regarding all the different uh, uh, kind of products. And this is a matter of eco-design and it's a matter of uh, understanding what is the best way to collect uh, these products and how can we handle uh, uh, within the paper recycling stream. Just to give you some statistics regarding Italy, in Italy we produce approximately 5 million tons of paper packaging. Uh, most of it uh, is, uh, let's say, normal, uh, normal paper-based packaging with a limited amount of uh, plastic lamination in, uh, uh, in corrugated box, folding box borders, craft sacks and so on, and uh, shopping bags as well. Uh, we have uh, some statistics regarding rigid paper multi-material, which is approximately 130,000 tons per year, and uh, we do not have clear we do not have a clear statistic about a flexible pa paper uh, packaging that is increasing, uh, but we estimate. Uh, that at least in Italy, all these products represent probably not more than two, three percent uh, uh, of the total that we have in the in, <clears throat> in the paper recycling uh, stream. So the problem is how can we measure the recyclability and why it is important to measure recyclability. I think uh, uh, you should have understood that it is important to measure recyclability from the perspective of uh, eco-design because no matter what you do in the choice of material and others and so on, <clears throat> uh, the, final, uh, uh, the final test is important to understand exactly what, uh, uh, how your products that you you are uh, developing uh, behave during the, the, the recycling process. <laughs> uh, there are at the moment a few standards uh, available in Europe. In Italy, we have the only uh, official standard that, that was uh, <clears throat> in the end released uh, uh, in 2019. And uh, what is important, uh, uh, this is an important message, is that there are currently underway in Europe uh, uh, 
important efforts uh, uh, toward the harmonization at least of the recyclability test methods. <clears throat> uh, this is a project that is now uh, led by uh, the European Federation of paper uh, of um, European paper uh, industry and uh, the first version of this harmonized test method <clears throat> will be released very likely uh, by the end of 2020. Uh, all these methods that are around in Europe, including uh, the one that uh, the official method that we have in Italy, they try to mimic uh, the paper recycling process. And what uh, you see here highlighted in red are the major points where we have a problem during the recycling of packaging. Coarse and fine rejects are the, those rejects that are obtained after the separation in the screen of coarse and fine non-paper components. And all, the, all those non-paper components that are excessively fragmented will go on during the process and they will reach uh, uh, the paper sheet formation where we have also uh, the other major problem the potential adhesion uh, during sheet formation as i said all these tests they try to mimic uh, uh, the industrial process here you see the scheme of our test method that uh, we use in Italy. And uh, the good news is that more or less uh, uh, is not a, the, the one that will be released uh, as a harmonized method uh, uh, will not be very much different than the one that we are currently using in Italy, since this method was taken as uh, a base for discussion uh, for the major <clears throat> uh, recycling uh, uh, countries like Germany, France, uh, and uh, UK. I mean, those are the main, <clears throat> uh, the main countries that uh, participated uh, uh, at the discussion, uh, but now it's uh, under consultation also for the National Association in other, in, in other countries. <clears throat> Uh, all these uh, uh, methods uh, uh, test some uh, the most important parameters, as I said before here, uh, repalpability, yields of fibrous material, coarse rigid, flake content, and stick and pulp cleanliness are the most uh, important parameters. I don't want to enter in the details of this parameter. You have some explanation in this slide. You can get back to us if you want to, to have, or maybe some pose some uh, question during the, uh, at the end of the session. <clears throat> uh, but uh, it, it is important to say how to use these uh, uh, recyclability test results. Uh, probably most of the companies are uh, aware that uh, <clears throat> uh, they have uh, a sort of uh, um, a sort of uh, um, auto declaration re regarding the recyclability of their products. This is stated uh, uh, in one of the requirement of the waste packaging directive in uh, uh, the standard thirteen four three zero. The results that you get uh, from the test method. Uh, uh, it's normally used as a support document at, uh, of the auto declaration that you can, that you are actually obliged to to make. Uh, but uh, what I think is most important. Uh, is that the use of the test results uh, is actually very important as a guide to eco-design. Because, uh, as I said before, no matter the, the best choice that you do during uh, uh, the, the choice in the, of the composition of your products, uh, uh, it is important to test the final outcome in a test method because you sometimes you get some surprise about the behavior of, uh, <clears throat> of, your, of, your, pro, of your material or or, or additives. Uh, additionally, uh Additionally, it is also a, a support declaration uh, uh, for uh, some kind of uh, certification. Uh, 
Uh, for example, in Italy, um, we have developed uh, this uh, certification. Uh, you see the labels here <clears throat> that is a release from Aticelca. Aticelca is the association of uh, is the technical association um, connected uh, to the uh, to the uh, association of the paper industry. And uh, based on the test results, uh, you can get uh, uh, this label that is presently used mostly for uh, business to business communication or business to client uh, not uh, not really well uh known for uh, uh, from the consumer point of view uh, but uh, I, we we believe that this label is very important for uh, business to business communication especially if your company is very sensitive to the development of uh, uh, of a more sustainable process because this is a sort of uh, uh, patent uh, to be sure that uh, uh, your process behave correctly in uh, during the paper recycling um, uh, during paper recycling Okay, uh, based on uh, the test method, uh, we have developed actually not uh, not uh, ourselves, not as Innova, but uh, as I said, uh, Aticelka uh, developed uh, this uh, assessment, uh, and uh, the assessment is based uh, on the results that you get uh, during the uh, dur during the test method, and as you see here, uh, basically. Uh, the, the rating is done uh, uh, with all the different parameters, but only few of them, coarse rigid uh, macro stickies, which are adhesives, and uh, uh, adhesion are the criteria that make <clears throat> a product uh, not non-recyclable with the paper, whereas all the other parameters are taken uh, to uh, assess the level of recyclability. Level of recyclability, it means how uh, easy uh, is recyclable the product uh, in uh, a standard recycling paper mill. And you see here that I have highlighted in yellow <coughs> level C. Uh, I have uh, highlighted in yellow uh, level C because uh, in Italy we consider this level uh, as a recyclable uh, predominantly uh, in a specialized paper mill because the amount of rigid is too high also the amount of, re uh, of adhesive is definitely uh, too high and, and, and so on. So it's a multi-criteria assessment uh, that can be used to develop uh, uh, to further develop the eco design and uh, you can also get a certification of your product. In the end, uh, regarding material recycling, uh, I would like to, uh, like, uh, to highlight the challenge and the priority uh, for, this, um, uh, for this recycling route. <clears throat> I really believe that uh, regarding new paper packaging development, uh, a common understanding uh, uh, is uh, really uh, a central issue in the uh, in the paper value chain in the next coming year. Uh, what I mean uh, as a common understanding, uh, I mean that we have to develop uh, uh, <clears throat> some test method that uh, can uh, uh, assess the products uh, and we have to guide the development of the new products uh, in a way that they will be in line with the possibility to be recycled uh, within the paper recycle stream. Uh, besides, or furthermore, we need uh, in, at the same time to develop uh, suitable infrastructure in all different countries in order to have uh, probably separate collection and uh, advanced uh, specialized meal that will allow new types of packaging that uh, right now cannot be recycled in the main paper recycling stream. Uh, they, uh, they will be able to recycle also these other, <clears throat> these other products and this will help uh, uh, to reach the target for the recycling uh, of paper packaging uh, and also will help to keep uh, uh, the fiber uh, in the paper industry loop, those uh, helping also to reduce the carbon footprint for this, for this multi-material. 
Okay, uh, just few slides now <clears throat> regarding organic recycling. Um, most of the issues have already been highlighted by uh, the previous speaker. I just want to highlight some uh, uh, more issue. Well, first of all, I guess you all know that uh, the main requirement for organic recycling is by the biodegradability, but biodegradability under very specific conditions. These very specific conditions are dictated by uh, European standard 13432, where you have to test heavy metals, biodegradability, disintegration, and the toxicity and plus uh, you have some restriction of non-biodegradable additives and this is a quite critical point uh, uh, that needs to be addressed not only with the laboratory but also with the certification body and uh, as you see here uh, these uh, labels for uh, 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 certification uh, were already discussed before. Just uh, I just want to tell you that in Italy we have an additional uh, uh, label uh, with some slightly different requirements and this can be uh, sometime a problem here in Italy because this label uh, when it is requested uh, needs to be tested not uh, not only according to the standard uh, EN 13432, but uh, our composting association wants also to be tested directly uh, at industrial level, the new development. But uh, let's get back to the uh, general challenge that we have in this uh, uh, recycling stream. stream. I think we have a good. We had a good discussion during the last year with the composting association here in Italy, and one of the main uh, challenges that was uh, pointed out was uh, that the organic waste uh, is still highly contaminated with the conventional plastic. <clears throat> this is what is so called uh, dragging effect. So every time we have a new bioplastic product that, that is not easy to distinguish uh, from from the conventional plastic uh, uh, as a side effect uh, as the fact that uh, uh, more conventional plastic is uh, uh, dragged in into the composting um, into the composting plant so the compostable packaging when it is not distinguish distinguishable uh, it's really a, a problem and we need really uh, to do something about that because uh, really the conventional plastic uh, even in those countries that have uh, uh, been used uh, uh, have been developed a lot uh, <coughs> uh, compostability like italy is still really one of the major problems uh, besides we have problem with the, the uh, faster development of integrated anaerobic and uh, with aerobic digestion because this poses additional constraint to the acceptance of some products uh, uh, as a matter of fact some bioplastic are not digestible in anaerobic condition and this uh, uh, obviously if it is not digestible most of the time it becomes uh, waste uh, during the, uh, the composting uh, uh, recycling. Okay, uh, regarding paper, uh, this is something that I want to highlight because paper uh, is actually, <laughs> in a way, is well is less known uh, for compostability in comparison to bioplastic. Uh, what I want to point out is that virgin paper is normally accepted. There is no need uh, of uh, testing the biogradability when you use virgin fiber. We just need to pay attention to additives uh, like, for example, wet strength resin that often contain fluorine. Uh, normally, they do not uh, pass the, the test due to the presence of fluorine. And also, up to a certain amount only, they can be used. And, and therefore, in the end, it's not possible to use these additives. Uh, but uh, if you use multi-materials containing bioplastic instead, that would not be a problem because if you have a certified paper and a certified bioplastic, uh, then uh, uh, it will be uh, very easy to, to certify the products. Of course, you have to keep in mind the, the, con the, the converting process. So, for example, printed products must always be controlled for the limits that we have <coughs> in the standard for heavy metal. Uh, 
Uh, another important issue is recycled paper. Recycled paper is definitely a complex issue for the certification of uh, uh, organic recycling. This is because it's very difficult uh, uh, to, sh uh, to show how uh, contaminants are uh, kept under control. Uh, when you use a recycled paper, you use a lot of different recovery grades, and it's very difficult to show uh, the certification body uh, how can uh, be homogeneous uh, the production that you that you make uh, uh, using recovered paper. Uh, besides, um, certification body very often uh, when they know that there is a recycled paper, they uh, want to have a biodegradability test. Uh, but the problem is that the recycled paper often contains a large amount of mechanical pulp, which in turn contain uh, lignin, native lignin, like wood, because mechanical pulp uh, is a material that is uh, prepared without any chemical process, uh, so uh, it contains a native lignin. But native lignin is probably the most recalcitrant uh, uh, natural polymers uh, in nature, uh, and uh, therefore its degradation is very slow. And uh, it is uh, very slow, but obviously in nature can be biodegraded. Uh, wood uh, is, is normally accepted, I mean, in, uh, uh, in composting plants. Uh, besides, uh, uh, the biodegradation of lignin, although it's very low, uh, slow, it produces uh, humic substances, which is actually an advantage for compost. So this issue is something that we are trying to discuss with, uh, uh, with the certification body because it's, uh, it is a kind of nonsense. Uh, we agree that contaminants must be kept under control, but on the other hand, uh, we, all, we are all aware that uh, the use of recycling materials uh, uh, must, be, um, must be in a way um, uh, favorite in a way if we want to keep uh, uh, circular economy and this is true also for when it uh, ends up in uh, uh, in organic recycling so uh, there is an issue it is an issue that we need to solve uh, and uh, but, but must be uh, must be known by uh, by the company that want to produce uh, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, that want to choose this kind of uh, recycling stream. In the end, uh, when we talk uh, about compostability, uh, we can state uh, in general terms that uh, composting plants anyway prefer pr plastic over bioplastic, uh, prefer paper, sorry, uh, over bioplastic because uh, uh, it disintegrates easily most of the time, avoids the dragging effect uh, of uh, traditional plastic because paper is very much distinguishable uh, with respect to conventional plastic and also uh, it poses uh, less uh, uh, problem with uh, anaerobic plants because uh, uh, paper uh, it's normally uh, easier to uh, biodegrade in an anaerobic condition uh, so uh, if you use multi-material paper plus bioplastic should cause less of a problem than bioplastic itself. Uh, and this is true also uh, for flexible material that is actually preferred uh, for organic recycling over these products <coughs> that sometimes have a problem with respect to the thickness of, uh, of the products, which means that disintegrates uh, 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 flexible packaging disintegrates easily. Uh, priority action in this recycling stream, uh, as it was already highlighted, uh, clearer harmonization labeling and consumer education are probably the, the most uh, important uh, uh, action. But uh, from my point of view, also development of innovative identification scheme that can help the consumer to identify what is conventional plastic and what is, uh, uh, what is a bioplastic product, what can be uh, um, properly uh, use for this recycling stream. <clears throat> uh, 
What can we say regarding uh, the choice of uh, the recycling stream, material recycling or organic recycling? <clears throat> From our perspective, and uh, this is something that we have discussed many times also during, <clears throat> uh, during, our, uh, uh, in, during the implementation of our products, <clears throat> pro uh, project, uh, material recycling should be definitely uh, the priority at least for all non-food packaging uh, uh, paper-based packaging but also for those uh, uh, products uh, intended for food contact packaging with uh, uh, in contact with dry food stuff because uh, dry food stuff doesn't pose any uh, issue for the recyclability of the products in uh, uh, in the paper stream in our opinion, organic recycling shall be limited to very specific application. Uh, for example, paper bags uh, for organic waste collection, that is obviously <coughs> uh, an advantage uh, because uh, along with paper you, or paper uh, or a multi-material based on paper uh, will, uh, uh, will drag into the uh, composting plants also uh, uh, some food, a lot of food actually in this uh, uh, in this condition, uh, which is a, definitely an advantage for the composting plants. Uh, also for those packaging that uh, requires a very high barrier against gases, moisture and uh, grease that may not be convenient uh, to recycle in this paper stream, but this can be considered, uh, you know, <clears throat> for a specific products. And uh, particularly, uh, Organic recycling can be an advantage when you look at uh, <clears throat> closed communities, loops like uh, school, company catering, large shopper center, centers, or public events where, uh, where you can collect uh, all material together uh, without sending to, um, to residual waste. And uh, what is important also that uh, in, in this condition is likely that you have uh, uh, residual food, which is an advantage, and it is also easier to guarantee certified the use of certified products and uh, also proper collection, which means that you have, a, uh, in this condition, you may have an agreement with the composting plants that can, uh, in reality, recover uh, all these products and can treat the products. So, concluding, um, Concluding, I would like to place uh, an additional uh, remark uh, <clears throat> concerning the, um, the discussion that we had uh, during this day uh, regarding the single-use plastic directive. <clears throat> Particularly, uh, during the first day, uh, it was uh, stated that uh, probably or very likely, we do not know yet, uh, also biocomposite will not be permitted uh, <clears throat> in the final version of the single-use plastic. Okay, from my, from my point of view, I agree with the fact that marine littering is definitely a, a big issue and we need to make some uh, decisions that are actually essential to move forward <coughs> regarding this uh, uh, big issue. But uh, on the other hand, uh, we have to keep in mind that marine littering is mostly due to bad consumer habits uh, rather than the product itself. That uh, the product itself should not end up in the water, uh, either fresh water or marine water, if it is properly uh, collected. collected. <clears throat> Therefore, in my opinion, I think uh, we need to improve as much as possible consumer education. We need to intercept, collect and recycle uh, as much as possible all the packaging material <clears throat> that is around. <clears throat> Possibly we should limit the development of those products that have a higher environmental impact, but ban only those, those products that are actually dangerous when they end up in the marine environment. So taking all this into account, 
I do believe that it still makes sense to develop uh, to develop uh, multi-material products, uh, uh, multi-material products uh, in a sustainable way. Uh, way uh, so sustainable biocomposite bio that uh, actually comply with the circular economy concept. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm ready to for the question. Thank you, Graziano. Uh, thank you for this, uh, for, for uh, unwrapping this, this very complex issue uh, and uh, doing it in a way that, that, was, that was very nice to listen. Uh, I see we have two questions from Hieronym. The first one is, are there any regulations for the adhesive labels on the paper package that guarantee recyclability of the whole package? Sorry, um, can you say it again? I don't see it. In the... uh, yeah, it, it, it should be in a public chat. If you go to public chat, you should see this question uh, at the bottom. Just scroll to the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> oh, to the bottom. Yeah. Is there any regulation for adhesive labels on the paper package that cannot recyclability on the whole packaging? Uh, no, actually there is no uh, a general regulation. As I said uh, in my speech, uh, uh, the main recommendation is not to use uh, uh, pressure sensitive adhesive because we are sure that those adhesives <coughs> are not recyclable. And, uh, but there is no regulation that, uh, that state that, they are, that you cannot uh, use. It is just a recommendation from our side. <clears throat> okay, and the next question was about uh, uh, where we can find this guide for eco-design that you talked about. Uh, Actually, there are not the general uh, eco-design guidelines. <clears throat> it is something that uh, uh, we would like to develop. There are, you can find some information. Uh, uh, actually, no, sorry. Uh, there is one guideline. <laughs> uh, it's not really only, uh, um, it does not really concern only uh, eco-design, but there is one uh, guidelines for the paper recycling uh, issue that was released by the European Federation in 2019. So we will put the link, or we probably already have a link in one of our training package, uh, uh, you know, materials that we have uh, <coughs> that is supposed to be uh, posted uh, in, uh, in the website. But uh, if you go under uh, uh, the website of the European Federation, I'm quite sure that you, that you can already find it there. And so it's not specifically only for eco-design, but you can find a lot of information. Uh, it will be developed further, I think, uh, uh, when we will have uh, uh, more uh, information, uh, when uh, the, the European methodology will be implemented at the European level. Okay, then. Uh, yeah, I, I see that Wojciech here wrote that uh, uh, Toyohem invented such an adhesive that uh, Jeronim was talking about, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, thank you very much, Graziano. Let's have a 10, 10 minutes break and then we will come to our last presentation, which I will do together with uh, Andre, uh, the uh, coordinator of our project. So, 10 minutes break and we see each other uh, half past 12. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.